Let's talk about tritium tubes, glow tubes, installation and removal. Over here I have a stack of actual tritium tubes. Here we have a stack of glow tubes. Let's talk about those first. Tritium is actually radioactive. These are self-luminous tubes. You stick them in the back of the flashlight and they are a light in themselves. Now they won't admit light for you to see by, it's so that you can find the button at night and click it. So when we talk about tritium slot or a trit slot, this is what we're talking about, this little guy right here. This is a, about a one and a half millimeter wide by six millimeter long kind of trough cut in the button. And it's made so that you take this little guy and you just, just drop it in. Now, once you drop it in, it's not a pre press fit. It will not stay with pressure. You have to adhere it with some kind of adhesive. So we're gonna get to that in a second. But now let's talk about glow tubes. What are glow tubes? Well. They're a lot cheaper and they're just made of glow in the dark material. So these will charge with light. So you can see right now, for example, you know, the red and the purple is kind of lit up, but there's these things in here that look clear. Well, they're clear because they're actually blue or green. And you know, if I hit these with UV light, this is a UV light right here. Yeah, you see how the color comes in? So that's glow in the dark material. You're used to that. And the fact of the matter is, is that it glows very brightly under light for just a couple of minutes. If you were to set your light down, then walk away and come back in half an hour, don't expect the tail of your light to be lit up. Now, that's just not going to happen with these uh, glow tubes. Now, tritium, on the other hand, has a half-life of 10 years. So you set one of these in your light, you're good, you're set. Also want to point out that it is radioactive, but remember, it's not hazardous, okay? This is a low level of, uh, I believe, alpha radiation? I don't know. I'm not a radiation scientist, but I just know that people have mentioned that it's stopped by your skin, so it's not a big deal. Also, we're talking about a very, very small amount of tritium here. Let's go on to installation. Now, the typical way to do this, and the way that I've done it in this light, is to drop a little tube in there. And by the way, that tube that doesn't look like anything, this is tritium, it's self-luminous. If I turned the lights out, you would see that it's glowing on its own. But tritium actually gets more activated by UV light. So you can see that, oh, there we go. You can see that it's a green light. Can you see that it's glowing green? Now, when I hit it with the UV light, it doesn't charge like a glow in the dark. As soon as I turn the UV off, it just stops. It just accelerates whatever radioactive reaction is going on inside the tube itself. So talking about installation, when you take a look at this, what I did is I dropped a little green tube in there, and then I put this stuff on it, which is called UV resin. People like to use the name brand stuff, which is called Norland 61. I couldn't find it when I was looking for it, and it was super expensive. So I just got this on Amazon. This was uh, under the nails and like health spa uh, section of Amazon and it's used for a uh, manicures and whatnot. It's very runny. You just kind of drip it in there and it stays runny until you hit it with UV light. So what I say, and by the way, as soon as you turn the UV light on, it hardens. So I suggest that you drop the little tube in there. There's going to be a little bit of play, take an exacto knife like this. And then you kind of just like push the tube around to get where you want it. It looks nice and straight because it could actually be a little wonky in there. Then you take your UV light and you go boom and you hit it. And I'm talking within a second, that thing is uh, solid. And then after about a minute, it's completely set. So give it about 30 seconds to a minute on high with your UV light and you'll be good. And as you can see, this is a trim tube. If I pull it like that, see I'm turning it to catch the light reflection. You can see that that tube is sitting in some resin. So this is resin set. Now, that's installation with UV resin. Now, on this light, sorry that I don't have it shown, but I had a tube in here earlier that was yellow. And I had set it with E6000. Now, E6000 is kind of like a rubber cement. If you've never used it before, it's pretty awesome. This stuff bonds like anything. And it bonded to brass. Now, the problem with it is it comes out of the tube kind of rubbery, but you, what you do is you take a needle and you kind of just little by little with a needle, and this is kind of painstaking, you just goop it in there, fill it about like maybe a quarter to a half of, of the depth of this trit slot full, then grab your little tritium tube, throw it in there and just press, and then walk away for about 24 hours, okay? It takes about that long to set. 
but once it's set, it doesn't fall out. I have several lights that are set with E6000, and it seems just as good to me as the Norlin 61 or UV resin. Now, why would I even use E6000? And the answer is reversibility. Here we go. Let's say you're going to sell a light, and I'm actually prepping this light to sell it. Well, maybe you want to get rid of that tritium tube. Maybe you want to keep it. Well, if you've used UV resin, can you clean this up and sell it without the trit? And the answer is you can. But you have to chisel it out, and it's going to break the glass tube. That trit will be sacrificed to get this light back to stock. Can you leave the light in a like-new sellable condition without any evidence that you ever had anything in there? Yes, you can, but it's kind of painstaking, and you're going to have to chip, 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 chip. And people are saying, like, toothpicks and stuff like that. That's false. That's never worked for me. You really need needles and kind of harder things, and you got to kind of chip at it, and you got to be really careful not to scratch the metal, but to be hard enough to chip the uh, actual resin away itself. I found something that was really good was actually small jewelers flat tip screwdrivers, and we're going get to get to that in a second. That's why I have this sitting here. So let's go forward to something that I think is kind of like a revolutionary new way to set these things, and that's the E6000. So you put it in with the E6000. As I said, it stays in there just as good. And then when you need to sell it, what you can do is you can hit with Goo Gone. And Goo Gone is a petroleum-based solvent. I know that they keep selling it like, oh, it's the power of citrus. Yeah, that's just a gimmick. There's toluene and some other petroleum-based solvents in here. So all I did was I took a little Goo Gone literally on the tip of my X-Acto knife, and I just kind of dripped it into here on top of where the trit was. Because remember, this was set with E6000. And then I just let it sit for a couple minutes. And then after about five minutes, I took the edge of my X-Acto knife and I got it like in the end next to the trit and just kind of lifted it out. And it came out kind of like, at that point, it felt like it was held in there with boogers and it just kind of came out. And then what I did is I cleaned up the boogers. The trit itself is in my stack, indistinguishable from the ones that I haven't used at all. Okay, it cleaned up perfectly. It's a glass tube. Everything came off. If it comes out so easy, is that a problem to set it with this E6000 in the first place? The answer is no. And the reason why is because before you hit it with the solvent, it's actually really, really set. I actually tried to do this without the solvent because I'd never done this before and it was just a new thing for me. So I got my X-Acto knife under the edge and I pried and pried and pried and I pried so hard that the edge of my X-Acto knife bent. Uh, the trit tube did not break and it did not come out. But I, as I said, I dripped the solvent in there. Five minutes later, it came out like it was held with boogers. Now, how do I get the boogers out? Well, here's a little trick I learned. If you go into your little bit set of your tools here, I found that if I took, let's say, a little Allen wrench uh, bit about the same diameter as the trit slot itself, and I think that's this one, you can just kind of, oh, see, it's too big. It won't go in. All right, let's try the next one down. You just kind of get that in there and it fits in the slot and it won't turn, right? So like the whole thing's turning because this is hexagonal, but you get it in there and it's really tight and you just go like that. You just kind of scrape that stuff out. So, and it comes out, as I said, it's kind of like rubber cement, kind of boogery at that point. So that kind of wraps it up, folks. Um, will I always use E6000? I don't know. I mean, the UV resin is so darn easy to install um, if I know that I'm keeping a light, like I know I'm going to keep this pineapple forever, uh, I'm likely to set it with the UV resin because it, it just, it's just dead simple to set it and it, it just sets in a minute. You don't have to walk, walk away for 24 hours, but I'm never going to sell this. Uh, if I'm going to sell a light or I'm just trying a trit out and I think, I think the E6000 makes a lot of sense. I got a couple lights that are set with it. And as I said, I just cleaned this one up for sale and you can't tell at all that anything was ever in there. And the tritium tube itself looks just as good as new. I compared it against another one I had. I couldn't even tell which was which. So that's my long 10 minute treatise on trit tubes, glow tubes, how to set them, how to remove them.